So Jesus is the logos in John's gospel. That's a Greek word for word. And what John is trying to do is demonstrate that Jesus is what we now know as the second person of Trinity. Jesus is that self-expression of God. Jesus is the word incarnate. So this is John's agenda to do whatever he can to present the theology that Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. You see that we've come quite a long way from the Gospel of Mark. In Mark, in 70 AD, we had Jesus not even acknowledging that he's the Messiah. Matthew and Luke, Jesus is not only the prophesied Messiah, but he's a universal Savior. And then John, he's not only the Messiah and universal Savior, he is God incarnate. Our focus today is really going to be on the prologue of John. John does not contain a birth story. He kind of actually does something better. And he goes back to the beginning and tells us how Jesus always existed. Just not in the way you thought. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. We know that Jesus is the Word, or at least John is going to show us that Jesus is the Word. In the very first sentence, John is telling us that in the beginning, the Word existed. It was with God, and it was God. John is establishing a theology on the Trinity, way better than the synoptics ever did. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This sounds a lot like Genesis chapter 1, no? This is what John is doing. John is retelling the creation story. He's saying in Genesis 1, when God said, let there be, that was God using his words. That was the second person of the Trinity. So nothing came into being without the word. The word brings us life. The word brings us light. God says, let there be light. Let there be life. Jesus brings light. Jesus brings life. We're not even through the first pericope in John's Gospel yet, and we have so much understanding of who and what Jesus is all about. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. The John referred to in this pericope, of course, is John the Baptist, who many people during the time of Christ and even up to the time this prologue was written believed was the true Messiah, not Jesus. By including this, John the Evangelist, of course, is trying to set the record straight. Verse 10, He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. John in his prologue is not only telling us the backstory of Jesus, but is explaining here's, what's, here's what you're about to see in this Jesus story, that his own people are going to reject him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. He's saying in that passage that that it doesn't matter whether or not you were born a descendant of Abraham, that you were an Israelite or a Jew, but anybody who does the will of God, Jesus came to save. We get baptized into a community of God. We become adopted children of God through baptism. And Jesus came for that reason. Jesus came to save us. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. His will trumps the laws of Moses. Remember the purity system? Don't touch ill. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Jesus makes God known. Jesus is God incarnate, and he makes him known. 
known. So what we see in this prologue will eventually become a theological teaching that we refer to as the hypostatic union. The hypostatic union says that Jesus was fully human and fully divine. John's prologue illustrates that better than any gospel before him.